met this attending, he was slightly brash, but probably, you know, the one thing which he did very, very well was, especially for patients with metastatic cancer, if he would recommend a treatment, he would print out the article and get the abstract part and give it to the patient and say, that this much additional benefit you're going to get with this much toxicities. And make it in simple words and not complex numbers. Because in the end, the patient wants to hear, how much longer am I going to live? Is it my quality of life? If you can answer those questions, and then the patient has the choice to make a decision. Do I want it or do I not, you know, want it? And I think we as the oncological community have to take this upon us to put real numbers in front of patients because we cannot complicate it. We cannot color it in a way that it confuses everyone. Just tell them what we know we can do or what we cannot do. Because in the end, it's a human being on the other side. It's not a machine. It's not an abstract thing sitting in front of you. Um, and you have to respect that. Well, I think that's 100% right. The problem is now when you have trials, a lot of them don't even report the endpoints we care about. Uh, hard, you know, OS, overall survival, actual toxicity data. Now we just make up endpoints that make us feel better as the physician, but don't and a lot of times translate to anything meaningful for a patient. Which helps, which makes the, when you present articles now, patients look at these numbers and you try to explain what this response rate means and waterfall plots and other nonsense and surrogate endpoints that have no translation. I think you bring up a great point. Surrogate endpoints are created by vested interests because they do not help the physician seeing the patient, they do not help the patient much. They help a lot of other things in the business of medicine. We have to get back to the basics of reporting and asking the question, is this radiation treatment? Is this chemotherapy drug? Is this immunotherapy drug in this particular setting going to make Miss XYZ live longer with a good quality of life? And how much longer? Is it going to be a few days? Is it going to be a few weeks? Is it going to be a few months? It's going to be a few years. And this is all in the metastatic setting where the cancer has spread and we are trying to control the cancer. In the adjuvant setting, more important that we do not look at vague endpoints like response rates, imaging responses, <laughs> lab responses. Here, the cancer is gone. We're trying to prevent it from coming back. So the only question, three things are important in my mind. Overall survival, quality of life, and cost. Both emotional, financial, and to the entire health system. I think uh, Brenna's rolling her eyes because I'm pretty sure on at least, I would say, half our podcasts, I think I say, say, I tell patients, I go, listen, if we're not doing one of two things, Improving your length of life or improving your quality of life? What are we really accomplishing? I think that that could be the motto. I feel like I've said that probably probably ad nauseum a little too much. Among other things. Right. And the cost is obviously very important. But it doesn't fit my nice two. <laughs> I like two. I like three, but try three. Is three is good. Three is good. We just started recording. Well, yeah. Wait, no, I... I uh... It was so bad Imagine at the beach. I'm like, I'm not leaving the office right now because it was so terrible. It's, yeah, how is this foundation is in? Is the foundation in? Yeah, yeah. I, I went there last weekend. Yeah, but, so uh, yesterday when yeah. I was driving. He's got to be your eyes and ears on the ground. Well, um, <laughs> you have the, it looks like a good 18 to 22 inch foundation with the uh, concrete blocks. Nice. Uh, nice. It looks good. Um, yeah. At least from what I recently drove by it and I saw yeah, yeah. it, it looks... Uh, I think great. I, it is exciting. Yeah. Hethel's in an absolutely terrible mood because she just had like another cabinet meeting. It's like her second 
cabinet meeting. And... Like the presidential cabinet? Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. Or oh, oh, you mean like a cabinet <laughs> in your kitchen? Oh, okay. I've not, not meeting yeah. with the. So are, we going, are we going with um, four panel shaker? What? Well, what well you know, oak, birch, bamboo. Oh, we know. We know you're a pure mahogany. <laughs> rich, rich mahogany, <laughs> like this man. <laughs> Um, no, what, what she told me on the way here, uh, she said, Danny, I'm not attending another meeting for the rest of this whole process. I'm like, well, that's going to be difficult because I don't know what I'm going to do. Now, what about the handles and knobs? Have you chosen a type? No, no, no. no. There's many things to be chosen. Soft close. Make sure you get that. Soft well, yeah, close. yeah, I think yeah. you have to get soft close. Yeah. We, we I did imagine some Dr. Kabrinsky's house. Brinsky's you don't even have to soft. say soft close. It's implied. So, it's a play. <laughs> um, we have we have done countertops, so I mean we're we're kind of nice. we're we're cruising along, but quartz? yeah, you get. I think we are going to do quartz. Yeah, we were kind of going back and forth. Okay. I mean, the benefit so like quartz, right? You don't have to seal anything. You don't have to do that. You can get quartzite, which is step up, which is like more natural look. We have um, quartzite and granite. Yeah, and granite. Yeah, granite. We have granite in the bathroom in our kids' bathrooms. And we haven't sealed it once since we've been, but they say you're supposed to at least once a year seal it. We know um, we've been sealed our granite. Yeah. We have it mainly outside. Okay. Uh, yeah. But uh, the inside is all quartzite. And, okay. Uh, quartz in a lot of places where for the guests and stuff like that. We don't it's low maintenance, money. right? Yeah. You don't worry about it, but he treats his guests with just quartz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> quartzite for the real, for the, for the onus. <laughs> and marble for Leapy. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Yeah, if so. we wanted to put marble, but um, with Indian cooking, it stains it. So yeah. the marble is just a lot harder to care for. It's very porous. Yeah. So everything seeps it's into bad. it. It's not worth it. But it's interesting. Like in India, where I grew up, a lot of our floors were marble and we accepted it without a problem. You just live with it. I think we lived with it um, and accepted a little bit of porousness. And um, things would fall and we would be yeah. okay. Yeah. But here somehow. It... Not, not when you have quartzite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quartzite's the new, newer thing. that It looks cool. I mean, there's some cool patterns with it. It can get quite expensive. But so just to let you know, if you go to these shops, they uh -huh. have um, half pieces, which are one third of the price. Okay. So what has happened is, let's say I, let's say I took a big piece. And I, mm -hmm. they cut it out, and they had a small piece left. They can't sell it easily, so they discount those dramatically. But so small, oh. like we got this much piece of an onyx, which is normally four hundred dollars a square foot. We got it for eighty dollars a square foot. Wow! Wow! It's good for like small, yeah, yeah. like a small, yeah. area. small, like a particular area you want to highlight and spend. Right, money. right. If you go. You have to give them the measurements. So they have to make sure that they can cut it and edge it up. Right. But they will do that for you because they want to get rid of that stone because it's just sitting on their property and not going to sell. Yeah. I'll ask about that. Thanks for the tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is ongoing struggle. So, so for the listeners, Danny walked in late. Because apparently he was having too many house meetings. <laughs> there work. were a lot. Of <laughs> he said, and uh, a lot, lot of stuff going on. It's an emotional storm. No, no, no. Oh wait. Oh man. Yeah, that's you. That's you picked the worst pop. Dang thing. it! Drink. That? That's the one where I don't know why they're stocking it. I told them to stop. It's got sugar in it too. It's not even. Well, it's, oh, it's fake sugar. sugar. It's, it's, fine. it's oh, fake cool, sugar. Cool. It's even worse. Oh. Uh, not great. I thought it said polar in it. it obviously, it's not polar. The, the Duncans also a disappointment today because they didn't have cold foam and oh, didn't no. tell me until I picked it up. So, so it's like a granulated. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's whipped cream. That's why it looks. <laughs> that's fine. A little. It still tastes. It's coffee. Good. That's all that matters. I know. That's fine.